Hello, how are you guys today? We're gonna do something a little different because I've kind of been a little cold in this apartment. You know, the heat's working in some parts, not so well in others. And I've learned quite a bit about what types of heating elements are safe and what are not so safe. I mean, let's get started with the fireplace. So yeah, there is heat in the apartment in some parts of it, but uh, like these pipes in the bedroom, don't work for some reason so the bedroom isn't that heated that well now a fireplace can be an excellent source of heat you know you put enough wood in here it's so so hot you know you can't even stand five feet away from this without having to step away but wood burning stoves are much more efficient from a fuel perspective because if you wanted this fire just to burn like a few hours a night and keep you warm easily spending a thousand dollars a month in wood if you're buying you know, full cords of wood, it's very, very, very expensive. It's not really practical. And on top of that, the fire produces carbon monoxide. And even just you know, 10, 15 minutes in a room with a really big fire, I already start getting lightheaded and feeling kind of weird and nauseous. So you have to open the window when the fire's on, which kind of defeats the purpose of the fireplace because you want to get warm. But even with the window open and a large fire, the room is much, much, much warmer. It's just, you know, really, really not sustainable from the fuel cost perspective. So I've done the fireplace a few times, but now that I have, you know, both space heaters running and some other insulation stuff, it's a little better. So I do have space heaters running, which we'll show you in a second. I did buy a kerosene heater, but I figured out that it's the same issue as the fireplace. It produces a lot of carbon monoxide and the smell the kerosene gives off is really, really bad. So this is great for an emergency because, you know, you just turn it on and it produces a lot of heat, but, you know, you can't really breathe it in. So even if this was in a garage, you know, I don't think it's that great. It's, it's more of an emergency thing to me. Got the kerosene over here. So good idea, but poor execution. Didn't know about the gas before I, uh, the fumes and the carbon monoxide before I purchased it. Now, space heaters are normally the solution, but the breaker boxes for the electric in this apartment aren't that great. So if I plug in more than two, it just completely blows the fuse. So that's why I had to look for, for other solutions. And these emit low levels of magnetic fields. So you don't want them to be really close to you, ideally at least like 10, 15, 20 feet away. Uh, so that's the main downside of the, the electric space heaters is the EMF fields. And since this is a smaller heater, which still produces a decent amount of heat. Uh, the magnetic fields aren't that high, but if you have something really, really big or powerful, then uh, magnetic fields from that might be more of a significant issue. Uh, I'll put this on my Amazon shop for you guys. I think they're like 30 bucks each now. I have one over here, and then I have one over here on the other breaker. Uh, so one thing you guys might not know about is these window insulation kits. If you have like older windows and there's like cold air seeping in, which makes a huge, huge difference. And these are really easy to put up. It comes with this like double-sided tape. You put it on there and then you just put the, the shrink wrap on the double-sided tape after you've placed it all the way around the window. We have this whole gigantic window kind of sealed off and that's kept the room a lot, lot warmer. Before I sealed up the windows in this room, I just could not keep it warm because the insulation wasn't good enough. But now just the space heaters are usually plenty. Now in the metal tent that I sleep in, I have two things, a low EMF heating pad, which gets very, very warm. This is super important. I like this a lot. And then I have a sleeping bag. So if you get like a cold weather sleeping bag and then you have it in a bed inside, uh, it does keep you pretty, pretty warm compared to a regular blanket. So uh, those are two things I've been using for a while. Um, I will put the heating pad on uh, my Amazon shop and the sleeping bag as well. The downside of the heating pad is it's really close to you and it gives off magnetic and electric fields, but this type of heating pad is not as bad. So if you're gonna use one, you definitely wanna make sure that um, it's low EMF because having this type of heating pad next to your like, especially reproductive organs and body the whole night is really, really bad for, uh, for just health in general. I mean, obviously if I plan on staying here for like the next one or two, I would you know fix things or find another solution. But um, since it's more of a temporary living situation, these are the kind of quick and in some cases not so economical things to figure out. I mean, obviously I'm not paying the electric bill, so I don't care if I plug in like nine space heaters. I would, but they, they blow the breaker. 
And I guess the main thing and reason for me making this video is just to warn you guys about the carbon monoxide from these heating sources because you might be wondering why you don't feel so good and it's because of that. And you gotta open a window in the winter, which doesn't make sense. Uh, there is one more thing, uh, these hot hand warmers. I ran out of them so I can't show them to you, but they get pretty, pretty hot. And if you put them in your pockets or in certain parts of your body, in your socks too, they'll keep you really, really warm. And yeah, I mean, it might cost you like a decent amount of money to do it every day for every month. But you know, if you put those warmers in your socks, buy your private parts, your underarms, say super, super, super warm the whole time. So uh, I'll put everything on my Amazon shop for you guys. Uh, I didn't really plan on making this video too, but um, I just want to do a change of pace instead of a day of eating. So thank you guys for joining me. Amazon.com slash shop slash Frank Tefano. And uh, as always, if you guys could drop a like on the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and check that notification bell because we'll see you soon.